Hello, everybody. So what is the non q 5 u 2 It uh, has a frequency range in the U.S. in the 900 range, but then it also has it for Europe. Uh, it could go up power-wise up to one watt. Uh, it can choose between networking of the pro mesh, but then also fixed links. And on another slide, I'll show you one another version that is uh, option that is uh, called manual that is more rare to uh, configure. You have that encryption, uh, the the flexibility with all the different protocols, and it also has uh, expansion modules communicating over Modbus RTU and actually Ethernet. But I'm going to show you an example with. Uh, Modbus RTU. So with it also, it has the eight digital ends, uh, so analog four analog ins, two analog outs, as pulse uh, inputs and outputs, and then you can have access to internal registers to look at voltage levels uh, and also uh, signal failures. But it, it it can be put into what is called legacy mode for the 915 to replace it, but then it also can uh, be able to replace the 905 units. So to do this, um, you have to go through a two-stage process, which I'm going to show at the end what that is. And in the first stage, you have to downgrade the firmware to uh, communicate as a 915. Once you do that, you go into the configuration of the 915 and you put it uh, into legacy mode. But when you do go from the 925 to the one the 915, you do lose the features that I just mentioned, uh, such as the dashboard, the logic, and some of the communications. So this is showing you a, a program structure. It right here is uh, the radio port. So when you do that, you can configure it as that pro mesh, the fixed links or that manual that I mentioned. And this is examples of that. So the pro mesh is automatically being able to detect uh, each one of the nodes and be able to pass the data. So if you have one that's in um, sight of one, and you lose the connection, it will automatically seal itself with the ProMesh. Fixed links, you can manually set up some of the, um, like for example, repeaters to communicate through. And then manual, which I mentioned is a, a rare uh, option that you can manually set everything up. So within the uh, program structure, they have the onboard IO, as I mentioned, eight, digital inputs or outputs where you could pick between the two uh, types, input or output. You have four analog where two can be single ended, two can be uh, differential, and then you have your uh, two analog outputs. But you do have access to internal registers of battery voltage, loop supply, the expansion uh, voltage of the module, of the modules, uh, the signal strength, um, failure, but then also you can act, have access to internal registers. It's a port that you can communicate over to RS-485 to different expansion card, which is the 115S. Um, then internally to the I.O., um, you do have the different blocks per the different types of I.O., but then you're able to go into thousands of internal registers to be able to pass that information back and forth through through the con, uh, condo line and in this case the not too far. Here's the example of all the different communication protocols. You have a proprietary peer-to-peer uh, -peer event based protocol that we have, but the ones that you mainly would be using is most probably the Modbus. So you have it via TCP and then also uh, RTU. A new feature that is not have been posted, but 
we're able to do uh, UDP over the Ethernet connection. So you'll see more of that um, soon. Uh, as I mentioned, the DNP3, and then the new one for more of the um, IIoT communications is the MQTT. And it's just showing you that you can do uh, that dashboard within the program structure. For hardware, as I mentioned, these uh, eight right here can be inputs or outputs. Where on the inputs, uh, you could do a, a voltage-free contact. So you don't need to apply any voltage externally. It provides it. The other is more of a syncing uh, type input, but they do have an adapter that can convert the syncing to a sourcing. And these are the two part numbers for that to where you can actually wire this up and convert uh, the inputs into uh, sourcing inputs. But on the output, it is a syncing output. For the analog, uh, you do need to choose via dip switches uh, for the analog in if it wants to be, uh, if you want it to be a single ended or a differential. And then what's nice is it has voltage, uh, loop powered voltage on the terminal box where you could supply you only your own power from the module. But that is limited, and I think it's 300 milliamps. Uh, and then this is again the example of the um, analog output. So for the daisy chaining of uh, additional I/O, we do that off of the RS-485 port on the bottom of the unit. Uh, you daisy chain it, hardwired, and we have three different versions of the the board, uh, the the modules. You have the 11, which has 16. Uh, discrete inputs and outputs. Uh, the 12 has eight discrete inputs and outputs, and then eight analog inputs, and then 13 has eight analog outputs. So with power, you have a choice of applying up to 30 volts uh, directly, or you can have it to where you have a battery or a solar system, solar panel solution. So some uh, software features that uh, it is able to do is the fail-safe block. We could do that this per I/O, but then also they have uh, blocks to do this, and it can be done via a discrete in or analog. And what is nice about this is you can set this up to be able to monitor if your remote node has communication, and if it doesn't. Uh, see this information, this block, it will um, turn the value of the register or actual uh, hardwired uh, output to a certain value that you configure it to be. So it's a good way of monitoring if you have a, a communicate, you have communications to your remote nodes. Uh, there's a sensitivity block, uh, which is one for uh, analog mainly to where if you're using the change of state communications, it's not just sending the information when you have a small uh, change of the value within an analog. You can put that sensitivity so where it's not sending information every time it goes to the uh, a tenth of a uh, um, a milliamp change. You can you can expand. You can um, control the sensitivity with this block. So we're we're done. Then see, it's just a uh, uh, software view uh, within the web server showing you the base unit configuration uh, using the the mesh, but then also the node the node version. They do have a uh, hot standby operation. So you do have some redundancy that you can use within the, the unit. This example of that dashboard uh, to where you can configure it here, and then it would show up in this area. But then what you can do is select it to run 
uh, as a web server when you um, want to look at the information over the web or on the network via Ethernet, you can set it up to where when you type in the IP address, it will only show the, 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 uh, this uh, dashboard. So it's pretty cool. This is just a window in showing the software of how to configure the, um, the logic. So this is a lot of different uh, selections. Um, from math to uh, conditional that you can set up internally. So it's not a full-blown PLC, but it does have some logic, some simple logic. So the next few slides, I'm going to show you different scenarios of conversion uh, to convert a non-05 type system to the non-25, which actually would have to be downgraded to a non-15 into legacy mode. So this example of a gateway, a 905 gateway, communicate Modbus to remotes that has a 905 U, and you got dash one, two, three, or four, which you have an IO. So these can only communicate IO. The gateway can communicate IO, but then also the, the, uh, the um, communications, in this case, Modbus. So the first scenario, I'm going to replace that gateway with the non-25, but in legacy mode. This allows you to gather the data directly from the remotes. Uh, but then what's nice is because of the feature, not the logic or the HMI, but it can also do uh, additional memory addresses. So you can, uh, from the other ones, um, Within here, you can actually have the internal registers, uh, but only over Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU. So going to scenario two, you have a system, same system with all the 905s. Uh, you replace, need to replace one of the remotes. You would put it in that legacy mode and you could bring in all the I.O. Uh, and then pass it to the gateway. So with the third scenario, same system, you're able to replace both and you're able to, um, you have to put in that legacy mode, configure it in the software, the e-config software, and be able to bring the I.O. in here uh, and then be able to bring it to the gateway and communicate out on bus to your PLC, HMI, or uh, any kind of host computer. So to do this, you need to go through a process of downgrading the firmware to the non-15. So the equipment required uh, is your non-25 you too need to get a USB memory uh, drive. Uh, you have to get the firmware, which you get from me or Matt or directly from our website. You uh, need a computer running Windows. You have a browser and then an Ethernet cable. So what you do is on your uh, Windows computer, you would format that USB. Uh, device uh, will drive uh, and do a quick format. And what I've worked with tech support out of Australia is if you use one of the USBs that have the hot, the high end, like one gig, it's it may fail. So you may want to get one that has a lower memory uh, because some of these, when you go through this process, may not work. Uh, what you do is you move those files that we send to you from to the firmware. You know, have when you get this firmware file, they'll have two files which are the firmware, which you would want to uh, load onto this formatted memory drive. But then they'll have a third one that actually will be the instructions. So you don't want to add that to it, but the instructions will show this whole process that I'm showing you right here. 
So once you have that and you have a good USB, you want to determine your firm firmware that you have uh, and then go through the process. And the process is, is to take the little, um, little uh, latch off of the side where they had the USB port of the uh, non-25. You plug in, well, you turn power off, you plug the USB in, turn the power back on, and what you need to wait for, if it's a good install on the, uh, the, the formatting, is a long pause of the orange LED for a minute, almost a minute and a half. Then once it goes through this process, then you'll see it blinking off and on for four and a half minutes or so. And that's when you know that you have a good format because it goes through it. And then at a certain point, when you have the green, then it, it, it um, is ready to reboot into the non-15U2 firmware. If you don't get to this point right here, you would have to go back to formatting the uh, USB. That's why I mentioned um, if you use ones that are, are higher um, size, potentially it may not because they have newer firm, um, uh, formatting on it. So you may have to retry it. And what they were saying is once you do get one, may want to label it as the LPRO uh, uh, USB, so way you don't have to go through that process again. So once you get it to, to do this and uh, it's successful, you want to go back and verify that it changed the firmware. And um, once you know that, then you can go to the next step. But if for whatever reason you want to go back to the non 25 firmware, you could go through the same process, but with the non 25 firmware. So you would be upgraded. So just to let you know that. Then once you do have it in not the non 15 firmware, you would go via the web server or the eConfig software, and you would have to put it into legacy mode. So they have a process of going and actually putting it the non-15 into legacy mode. Once you do this, it is ready to go and you could go through uh, being able to use it within the eConfig, configure your system as uh, I showed you the different scenarios and uh, it'll work like a non-05. 